Taking place in the older Scandinavian time eras, a young boy by the name of Ole awakens after a nightmare at night, a nightmare seemingly projected from the scary fairy tales his mother read to him late at night before sleep. Ole tries to go to his sister to get some comfort, coming to discover an empty bed with no sign of his sister anywhere, named Lillimore. Examining the bedroom that they share, Ole finds a picture storybook of an unnamed character being a young girl who sneaks out of her room to go to the nearby forest despite her mother asking her not to. The forest at first being tempting and nice soon turns dark and cold with Bramble wrapping around the girl which makes her change her mind and want to go back home but she loses the way and the Bramble and possible evil forest spirits prevent her from going back. This night seems to be the last she was ever seen before disappearing. This in a way is foreshadowing to what could have happened to Lillimore, only says there a fairy tale which the mother read to Lillimore before sleep in a way to scare and warn her to what could happen to her if she wouldn't listen to the mother. That is what happens when you do not listen to your mother, especially you Lillimore. Their mother had said before kissing them goodnight. Ole takes a look at the window left ajar when he finds a blanket used as a rope which displays how the sister had used it to climb down and go to the forest. Ole, seemingly believing the fairy tales, goes to find his sister as the thought of never seeing her again scares him severely. Walking through the dark and cold forest, a place that is familiar in day but not recognizable at night, Ole senses monsters lurking in the shadows but continues on with the thought of his sister. Going through a cave, Ole finds a glowing bright sphere which lights the dark forest when he needs it in his most fearful times. That's why the sphere is also known as the Spark of Courage. Soon, Ole gets gravitated towards the enchanting curls and yodels of his sister, finding her observing the spectacle far away from the high point of an old ruin. Ole showing her the glowing rock he found earlier, they start to play with it when all of a sudden, the cliff edge the ruin was built upon collapses, causing Ole and Lelemore fall down on a steep hill sliding down. What a strange rock. Light as a feather. She investigated closely. Strangely, the night suddenly transforms into a bright, clear day, with the siblings finding themselves in unfamiliar territories of the forest with enormous fruits, trees, and mushrooms. The magnified forest and the change of weather are not the only altered things, as they soon come across magical and mystical beings such as fairies and gnomes. By now, it is hinted that the siblings are probably not in the real world anymore, with their imagination creating an alternate world, shaped by the fairy tales and nighttime stories their mother read them. Therefore, it's a possibility both Ole and Lelemore died after the fall or at least went into a coma, traveling into this rather unreal world created by their dying minds. After playing with the cheerful gnomes who are surprised to find entities for the first time not hunting them to eat them, the siblings continue on their mystical journey to find a deep well. Lelemore, after a quick look, being the courageous and curious one of the two, carries on with her exploration, but Ole, being the more grounded one, becomes completely mesmerized and enthralled with the day turning into night when he notices he's all alone again with no sign of his sister anywhere. The story only becomes more ambiguous and strange from here on, as the sister for some reason leaves without taking Ole, while Ole stands in front of the mysterious well until night dawns. Being a full day and a night that they are out now, a fairy soon comes to Ole, getting his attention and flying to a specific direction as if guiding Ole somewhere 
specific. The fairy leads Ole to his sister, who is accompanied by another fairy, when all of a sudden, a massive troll holding a sack takes them by surprise and kidnaps Lelemore, putting her in the sack. Seemingly a sack, he puts his praise in and proceeds to chase after Ole to take him as well, when he outruns the troll, narrowly escaping him by jumping into the river. Ole after a while awakens in a field with a bright day, strengthening his will of finding the troll and rescuing his sister. Strangely, as he continues the path ahead, he finds himself exactly back in the ruins he found his sister in previously. In the ruins, he sees his sister yet again, which slowly turns into a grim surreal sight of her suffering before we learn it's just a dream, with Ole being saved and taken by a giant frog into the safety of firm ground from the rapids of the river. As Ole awakens in the dark forest, he musters all of his courage, feeling yet scared. He goes to find the troll and save his sister, as the thought of being alone without a sister scares him even more. As he passes through the village of the gnomes, he comes across the tragic destruction of their houses and the trail left behind, with majority of the gnomes being kidnapped apart from a baby gnome left behind, possibly all done by the vicious troll that kidnapped Lelemore. After a while, Ole spots the troll in the distance when he follows him, seeing a tied up gnome in a clear trap set for other approaching beings. As Ole tries to free the gnome, he falls in the trap booby trapped with spikes, with many dead deers and large animals when he follows the path, entering a different troll slaughterhouse where he also butchers his preys. It becomes clear that there are more trolls in the forest as this one looks different to the troll that kidnapped his sister, who had long hair and was leaner, which displays that these trolls might be related in some way. He manages to bypass this monstrous being, reaching the pantry where the troll keeps all of his fresh ingredients, aka gnomes and other life beings, including some vegetables as he needs to get his vitamins as well. After freeing the caged gnomes waiting for their doom, Ole directs them through a safe passage to enter a safe house. Just as he does that, staying behind to find his sister, he observes the long-haired troll who kidnapped his sister appear, proceeding to stump over the house in spite and anger, killing all the baby gnomes Ole rescued. Hiding behind the tree, witnessing this tragedy in horror, feeling guilty for not helping and being scared, even though he wouldn't be able to do anything. Ole crawls through the tall stalks of grass to evade this hateful troll, as he clearly didn't want to recapture the gnomes for food. He simply wanted to punish them for escaping. Ole then comes across a swamp of dumped carcasses and biological waste filled with maggots and other insects, which he is forced to pass through, noticing a hostile being crawling under. Having no other choice, Ole uses a cage containing a gnome and throws it down into the swamp, essentially sacrificing this gnome's life in order to use it as a bait and bypass this monster. This shows the sudden change of Ole's morales, from someone who valued the lives of the gnomes to someone who is willingly sacrificing them, all in efforts to survive and save his sister. Especially seeing how many gnomes were stumped to death, forcing him to face his fears very quickly and overcome them with any means necessary. Soon, Ole comes across Lemos, a kind-hearted giant who assists Ole with an obstacle after Ole frees him from some mean entities who bully him. Ole then finds his spark of courage again, the glowing rock, when he gets captured by the long-haired troll who intends to eat him right then. But the spark of courage flashes, making him pass out and dream of his sister being well and safe. As he reawakens, he notices how this glowing stone has turned the troll into stone, depicting how powerful this little rock truly is. Also in Nordic mythology, it is mentioned that when trolls are exposed to daylight or sun, they turn into stone, which could mean that this little glowing stone could emit the same strength of brightness of the sun. Not finding the sack that the troll had that put Lelemore in before, he realizes that this is possibly not the same troll, being determined, overcoming his fear one step at a time to continue onward to find his sister, as he refuses to give up and think that his sister is dead. That's when hearing an enchanting melody from far away takes control of his body, attracting him towards the source of the sound, dancing manically, confused to what's happening, yet unwilling and unable to stop, which makes him fall down a hill, leading to a dark cave. 
Questioning his own sanity and what he just experienced, he shakes it off and uses the bright stone to light his way. In the dark cave, he notices small cages with human remain and some even with alive people who have lost their mind, being hostile and angry. This shows the contrast between the bright colorful outside just a few steps away, while the prisoners in this dark and gloomy cave are left in a small cage to rot away. So close yet far away from this colorful and bright outside. As Ole passes the cave, he observes engravings appearing, unveiling the tale of a monster who uses a musical instrument to lure children and kill them, being telltale signs of who the potential musician was who played the melody controlling Ole's body. As soon as he exits, the cave, the same enchanting melody plays, with Ole trying to force his ears shut but inevitably losing control and following the sound. Reaching the nearby lake, the zombie-like monster is seen in the distance playing violin who notices Ole and quickly submerges himself in the water not to be seen. As Ole tries to cross the lake, this monster sets on a chase going after Ole, which he narrowly escapes, taking refuge in a cave. The looks of this giant monster reveals how badly decomposed he looks, as if his flesh and skin is coming apart from the long exposure of being in stationary water such as lakes. In the cave, he comes across the skeletal remains of a parent and a child who had a book in their possession. The parent is seen holding the ears of the child, depicting how they were hiding from this monster. The book in their possession is a fairy tale, coincidentally having the tragic tale of this monster and how he became what he is now. In his past life, Nekin was a simple man that loved playing his violin. But the village did not appreciate his talent. People would frequently bully him. And the only soul that did not was a girl that Nekin fell in love with. One day the bullying and beatings became so severe that Nekin's anger finally overtook him. He marched into the village, playing forbidden melodies that made everyone dance until their flesh and bone got worn down. They eventually died leaving behind shuffling corpses, still trying to dance to Nekin's melodies. His love was not spared death either. Devastated, Nekin left the town and lived by the lake drowning in his sorrow, where he still lures people with his deadly music. It's revealed this monster is called Nakken, who was a musician in the town who didn't appreciate his talents as they were closed-minded. Only one girl liked his music, whom he fell in love with, but this only angered the hooligans of the town who beat him up so badly, which in return enrages him, driving him into a frenzy where he starts to play forbidden music which would drive any listener to insanity. The aftermath, all people died, including the girl that he loved, which makes him become the bitter insane monster he is now, sitting in the lake and luring more people to kill, never having moved on. Roaming the surreal, altered forest, as if all fairy tale monsters and creatures have come to life, Ole leaves the cave just to get ambushed by Nakin. Both Nakin and Ole fall into a waterfall, with Ole surprisingly surviving, with Nakin dying as a result of falling onto a large rock. Finding himself back in the dream world, going to the ruins, Ole sees himself in the middle of large brambles trying to wrap around him, when a blindingly bright light clears them off, saving Ole. Ole is back to the waking life, finding a girl in blonde hair and a white dress in a very unlikely place, as of being the source of his light that saved them from the bramble in his dream. Her name is revealed to be Tuva and she seems to have supernatural powers as she fills the stone with her radiance and Ole's heart with courage. Tuva tells Ole to follow the light to find his sister acting as an ally in this unlikely place filled with hostile monsters and bramble. Reaching the end of the forest, Ole enters an abandoned town with destructive bramble intertwined with the houses, making them inhabitable by anyone. Ole then comes across a large statue of a king who used to rule who had a just system, treating everyone fairly and being brave, but now the entire town is overrun by darkness and 
Bramble. After a while, Ollie finds himself in a house to what seems to have belonged to a witch. Reading a book lying around it describes the ritual for connecting to demons and achieving dark and inhuman powers. In exchange, it encourages mothers or midwives to sacrifice babies or their babies and offer their own lives. Ole, horrified by the whole ordeal, sees a deranged person, a woman on the top floor, taking a baby to drown in the nearby swamp. He runs towards them to stop her from doing so when he notices a baby's cradle floating on the water while a demonic entity emerges out of the water to stop Ole. Ole uses his glowing stone and manages to defeat this monster who is seemingly called Karhakshan. Catching up to the woman and the baby with the woman drawing a sign on her door to seemingly stop any intruders from entering. As Ole tries to pass the shallow swamp, he gets surrounded by dark spirits which seem to be the souls of the drowned children who died as a sacrifice for women who traded with demons to be reborn as goddesses free from any human emotion, pain, and suffering. As Ole reaches the woman who wanted to perform the ritual, she finds her already dead, given her life as a sacrifice to be reborn, with the child also drowned in shallow waters for the ritual. Ole, crying, feeling guilty for being unable to save the child, gives it a proper burial, which prevents it from becoming another dark soul in the swamp. Being sad and feeling guilty, Ole finds an old man holding a lantern named Lechtgube. Following the advice of Tuva, the blonde girl who saved them before, Ole follows the light of the lantern, following this old entity. Lechtgube seems to be a curator who collects all the secrets and stories of the world, being as old as world himself. Going to the library of Lechtgube, Ole learns about King Neil and his queen, Magdalena, and their longed-for son, Ulrich. Long ago, there was a peaceful kingdom that lacked an heir to the throne. King Nils and his queen Magdalena had waited for a long time, and at last she was expecting a child. She gave birth to the longed-for son, and they named him Ulrich. But suddenly, doctors crowded around the queen's bed. Magdalena succumbed to the labors of childbirth. The love of his life was gone. Weighed down by sorrow, King Nils approached his autumn. Meanwhile, Ulrich grew into a young boy full of life. The prince was the only thing that kept the darkness at bay in his heart. One day, Prince Ulrich fell ill. The doctors tried everything, but he grew weaker and weaker. They told King Niels about a mythical flower that witches were rumored to use to heal any illness. King Niels searched the whole kingdom for the flower to no avail and his campaign soon became a gruesome witch hunt. His path was lined with the witches he had slain, but the flower was nowhere to be found. This mystical flower seems to be the one that was protected by brambles in the abandoned town which threatened all his life, which could mean the flower was the source of all bramble that grew and overtook the forest. The large statue of the king also seems to have been of King Neil, depicting how the peaceful kingdom he had turned into a cursed kingdom full of demons and monsters and fear due to his selfish act of trying to find the flower to heal his son leaving a trail of death and bloodshed in his search. After some well-needed rest and warmth, Ole goes back to his search for his sister when all of a sudden he sees his sister calling to him while running away, which he follows, reaching a monstrous demonic being by the name of Skogsraut. She seems to be able to create illusions to lure people and even enchanting them. She has surrounded herself with trees, with men being suspended on them, with their chest cut open, having still beating hearts, which she draws her powers from using blood magic. As Ole destroys these half-living men, it weakens this deceptive monster which allows him to easily kill her, with the stone transforming into a sword. Having been through a lot, being manipulated by this monster, enraged by seeing an illusion of his sister being tortured by this demon, he loses his temper and brutally punishes this monster despite her cries and begging him, stabbing her non-stop even after her death. 
After coming to his senses, Oli bursts out crying, both for being enraged and also that his sister might be dead, shaping into a monster himself. Standing up, still determined and driven by finding his sister, he pushes on, going through a burnt forest with massacred women and abandoned homes, with a mysterious character seen at the back roaming this forest, seemingly being the representation or personification of death. Going through the plague town, Ole comes across disgusting white humanoid creatures who feast on the flesh of corpses, attacking Ole if he gets close enough. Enduring a house and reading a book, the tragic backstory of this town is revealed and how it became the way it is. Once there was a peaceful village near a great forest. One night, people began to see a beautiful woman with long dark hair lurking in the shadows during the full moon. Men started to follow her into the forest. Some of them never returned, and those who did had lost their minds. Eventually, the villagers had enough. They took all the dark-haired women of a certain age and put them on trial for witchcraft. They started to execute them, hoping to find the right one. Yet men kept disappearing during full moon nights. The villagers grew more and more desperate and burned down a large area of the forest in the hope of finding this strange, beautiful woman. But to no avail. The villagers had lost themselves. They killed their own mothers and daughters. They burned down more of the forest that had served them with resources. Then one night, when the moon shone at its brightest, five brave men took matters into their own hands. They put on their coats and walked into the burnt forest to hunt for the woman with the dark hair. They saw the beautiful woman standing in a clearing. The men were instantly enchanted and followed her deep into the forest's heart. She was a shapeshifter that mimicked what men wanted to see in order to lure them away. When they were close enough to touch her, she transformed into something monstrous. She ripped their chests open, hung them up in the trees, and drew strange powers from their still beating hearts. And no one would ever see them again. This demonic entity had the ability of shapeshifting, changing into what people desired the most, who lured many men to draw powers from, performing blood magic, which let the town get driven into insanity, burning the forest and killing their own mothers, sisters and daughters. This is how Ole saw Lelemore as the monster could mimic what he desired the most, his sister. Walking deeper into the gloomy town, it appears that Skogsraut was not the only entity being the culprit for this town's doom, as many corpses remain in the houses rotting, displaying something else killed them in their own houses. The sight and sound of rats moving around depicts how this town was decimated by a deadlier force, the plague or the Black Death. Possibly after burning the forest and having many crucified and killed corpses lying around rotting, it drove the rat population into the town to seek food and resources, hence the direct result of their desperate attempts of getting rid of the witch, killing many innocent women in the name of witch hunting, led to their own retribution, dying from the plague. Finding a book, it soon confirms that a plague did in fact hit the town, killing the survivors after the brutal witch hunt. The book also unveils who the rotting zombies are. They in fact are dead rising who died from the mysterious plague, inspired from the baboonic plague, who eat and feast on the living. Apparently, it's rumored that an old woman with a rake roams the plague-ridden town and whose ever house she passes dies from the plague. This portrays the walking death-like figure we saw earlier was in fact this mythical being who acted as death, but specifically during plague time as whoever she visited contracted the disease. Ole soon finds a boat which he gets on and rows to leave this grim town with a dark backstory, rowing towards the legendary mountain of the Mountain King where he could maybe find Lelemore. That's when all of a sudden the rank-wielding old woman of the gossips appears at the back of the boat, covering all his eyes, as if not being seen by him, which veils his mind in dark illusions where he has to face this entity known by the name of 
Pesta. Pesta is the personification of plague and death as she vomits rats carrying the disease which Ole has to defeat using the spark of courage, which after some time he manages to defeat Pesta, reaching the mountain where he believes he can find his sister. <laughs> Reaching the summit, he finds it to be completely wrapped in bramble. As he disperses them using his glowing rock, he reaches a familiar place, similar to the ruins they started their journey from. While clearing up the bramble, all he thinks about the mental scars he sustained from his journey. How he had to brutally kill the shape-shifting Skogsraut, how he couldn't save the baby from the midwife, how he couldn't save many gnomes, and how he even had to sacrifice one. Getting closer and closer to the place Tuva directed him towards, he reaches the chambers of King Niels, the king who lost his mind, going on a witch hunt to find the mystical flower to heal his son. Suddenly, he finds an entry to the magical domain of Lick the Gube, a friendly knowledgeable entity who helped him before, appearing temporarily here yet again to assist Ole one last time and inform him about the last days of King Niels ruling as a human king. Exhausted, bloody, and at his wit's end, King Niels came to a witch's house on the outskirts of his kingdom. He fell to his knees, begging the witch to help cure his son, and she agreed. The witch explained that the flower held tremendous power that could only very carefully be used for good. The witch instructed he only use a single petal. Using the whole bloom would only invite death. Ulrich began to recover, but discontent at the royal line had grown in the kingdom following King Niels' bloody campaign. The next day, King Niels found his son dead, and the last light holding his darkness at bay was snuffed out. Heartbroken, King Niels turned to the bloom which had promised life, and instead saw it as an escape from his suffering. The witch, having come to visit the king and the prince, looked at the nightmarish scene in despair. She raised a mountain on top of King Nils and shackled him using the same bramble that he let loose upon the kingdom. King Nils is an example of a man who loses sense of justice and peace when tested at worst times. He suffered tragedies one after another, losing his wife then his son, but in no way did that give him the right to take away the lives of other innocent people. He was tested with pain and loss, revealing his true nature of being cruel and mindless to other sufferings. If he were a real king, he would become more empathetic after losing his wife, knowing how not only does it affect the deceased but other living loved ones. Using the very same magical flower that gave life, he uses it to take away life, making the kingdom become the bramble ridden hell hole it is now, leading to the witch sealing the kingdom with the king not to make the bramble spread any further. This leads to the king transforming physically to his true inner evil, enraged and resentful shadow, a monster who seeks destruction due to his pain. Ole, exploring the abandoned king's chamber, finds a royal suit that fits him perfectly, clearly belonging to the deceased son, Ulrich. As Ole gets closer to King Niels, he finds trolls serving him, effectively being cursed to be the king of trolls who themselves could be human at some point, being cursed for sins they committed to turn into the hideous trolls. Finally, managing to find a new king chamber, who has now turned into a colossal being, old and bitter, he sees the troll that kidnapped his sister taking the sack and throwing Lelemur into the sleeping mouth of King Niels. Unpleased with the small portion of food, King Niels impales the troll and proceeds to eat him raw and have a live buddy to satiate his never-ending hunger. After destroying some of the flowers and bramble, it clears up King Niels' vision, who sees Ole dressed in his son's outfit, which reminds him of Ulrich. For the first time in centuries, King Niels decides to fight off the curse and the darkness, pulling out the flower planted on his back when the source of the curse, the flower, blossoms. He stabs it right in the center, ending the curse, dying as the result, as the source of his longevity was this flower which corrupted him. Ole, while climbing to access inside of King Neil's stomach to free his sister, throws the glowing rock in his mouth before falling a great height to his death.
This allows Lenamore to find the glowing rock and pierce a hole in his abdomen and get out safely. But for Ole, it seems to be too late as Lelemore finds him lying peacefully on the ground. Just as Lelemore gives up crying, the spark of courage, empowered by Tuva, absorbs inside of Ole, reviving him back to life. The mountain, being the prison of King Niels, starts crumbling soon after, destroying all the pain and misery gathered up here. With no way out, one heroic ally arises, Lemus, the friendly giant, helping both Lelemur and Ole, never forgetting the kindness Ole showed him. Sometime after, Lelemur awakens one night, frightened by her past traumatic memories, wanting to seek her brother's comfort, however, she doesn't find him. Looking outside the window, she finds Sam, who invites her for a nighttime stroll. Being scared of nighttime now, she knows she is fully safe in the presence of her brother, as a once scared Ole proved to be a giant slayer, and truly a courageous hero as he faced all his fears to rescue his beloved sister. Now a few things I want to go over as they were unclear as to whether any of this was actually real or not. Looking at this tale with a set of fairy tale goggles, we can easily say it was a tale of monsters and overcoming one's fears. The tale of a scared boy who faced all his fears to save his sister, becoming the hero of the story. However, looking at it through a more grounded and real perspective, it's quite likely both Ole and Lelemore are dead, passing away before any of the adventures began. Through a storybook in the room, we learn Lelemore was a naughty and curious girl who always snuck out at night to explore the dark forest, which led to the mother telling her creepy stories to scare her from going to the forest that night, and that she could be wrapped in bramble and face demonic beings. If we take a look at their bookshelf too, we see how many folklores, fables and fairy tale books they have all entailing the mystical creatures mentioned in their adventure, read to them every night before bed by their mother. Even when Ole awakens, he had a nightmare surrounding these fairy tales which depicts that Ole and Lelemore believed in the mystical creatures actually existing and feared them, with their minds imagining them. When both go to the ancient ruins, it collapses with both falling when they get to the bottom of the hill, being completely transformed with magical beings and possibly enlarged eyes items and the night changing into day. Therefore, it's a possibility the fall from the collapsing ruins actually killed both Lelemur and Ole, whose dying minds in their last moments imagined an entirely new world, exaggerated by their imagination of the fairy tales they knew and read. It becomes even stranger as if being stuck in a dream state when both Lelemur and Ole stare into a well, while Ole stays and Lelemur leaves, abandoning Ole with the day turning into a night, separating the siblings. This could be the subconscious of Ole trying to find a way to separate the siblings to make Ole in his imagination achieve what he desires the most. Facing his fears, overcoming them and saving his sister, rising as a hero. Ole was always scared and never as adventurous as his sister, but subconsciously he didn't want to be scared anymore. Hence why his imagination created this world, imagining the monsters of the stories taking his sister to what he would do after he fell, drawing his last breath. It's also suggested the story of the game takes place in early 1900s, as Ole has soldier figurines with guns and uniforms reminiscent of Swedish army uniforms and choice of weapons in World War I with a cross strap and folded hat, using a long rifle with a bayonet attached. Therefore, the adventures Ole goes through are more closely tied to medieval times, going back to 1350s or even further back, as the most devastating recorded baboonic plague broke out at those times, with a town Ole visiting still being tormented by it, with recently deceased bodies still lying in the streets or their homes. The adventures of Ole also have very ancient beliefs and periods, with witches roaming around, trolls, witch hunts being a common practice, and much more. Therefore, it strongly suggested Ole travels to a fairy world, away from the tragedy of war during the Great War, jumping through periods of hysteria, superstition, great plagues, royalty, and legends, clearly depicting he in fact is not in the real world. With the current, or at least, early 20th century technology and advancements being non-existent, 
happened. This fortifies the theory that Ole is stuck in an imaginary world, possibly after falling down, dying. Or even a more tragic theory could be that a bomb fell on the ancient ruins that they were on in the middle of the night, killing both Ole and Lelemore. This would even make much more sense why the mother wanted to scare Lelemore from going to the nearby forest as many bombings have been happening there. As a result, she wanted to protect her. So I don't think the game specifically created a cutscene of Ole playing with the soldier figurine as a time filler, but as a hint that Ole goes through imaginary adventures of ancient times, suggesting they are not real. To add more to it, the first storybook shows how the girl who goes to the nearby forest follows two fairies, exactly how Ole and Lelemore started their journey before being startled by a troll, which clearly implies the adventures of Ole followed the storylines of a fairy tale books he read, being all in his mind projecting the stories. Right folks, that's about it for this video. What are your thoughts and opinions? I'm making a subsequent video about the bosses and the monsters of the game, so make sure to stay tuned for that by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. As always, it's been your host star and I will see you on the next video. Have a fantastic day.